Our 2D animation allows us to see what happens across the entire length of a transmission line when it is terminated with different loads. It does successfully represent incident and reflected voltages and how they add together to generate a voltage wave that propagates down the transmission line. It also gives us the envelope of this voltage waveform, which, for an unmatched line, would be characterized by maxima and minima. From this we can see that if we are at a position where the envelope is at its peak, traveling a quarter of a wavelength down the line will take us to a position where it is at its minimum. If instead we travel half a wavelength from the position of the peak, we end up again in a position where the envelope is at its peak. Students are often confused by the envelope of the total voltage. They ask themselves, if the voltage is changing all the time, how can it be a fixed DC value at any point along the line? So what do the voltage values associated with the envelope actually represent? This can be clarified with our 3D animation, which enables us to see the voltage that would be observed at any point along the length of the line if we probed it with a high-frequency oscilloscope. Let's keep our line unmatched and terminated with a 25 ohm load. We can see that as our voltage travels down the line, at the zero coordinate, we observe a sinusoidal voltage of a fixed amplitude. We can rectify this voltage to measure its amplitude, and that amplitude value is what this point in the envelope represents. We can then move down the line by a quarter of a wavelength, again using the slider. Now we can see that the amplitude of the measured voltage at this point is much larger than it was at the zero coordinate. Indeed, since we have moved a quarter of a wavelength from a point of minimum amplitude, we are now at a point where the amplitude of the sinusoidal voltage observed with our probe is at a maximum. Again, we can measure this amplitude and we will see that it matches that associated with the peak of the envelope. If we now move our probe another quarter wavelength down the line, taking us half a wavelength away from our zero coordinate, we will again measure a sinusoid with the same amplitude as that observed at the zero point. We can do this with any of the five terminations shown here. Let's look at what we get if we terminate our line with a short circuit. In this case, our 2D animation tells us that the envelope variations are much more dramatic we get a standing wave with minima at zero volts and maxima at twice the amplitude of the original stimulus. This means that the voltage observed at the zero coordinate this time would be zero, as shown by the animation. The voltage observed a quarter of a wavelength down the line will instead be a much larger amplitude and in fact the maximum that we will observe at any point along the line. Once we travel a bit further down the line, half a wavelength away from our original zero coordinate, we can see that we are now at a point again where the amplitude of the voltage is zero. Of course, if we match the line, i.e. if we terminate it with a load equal in value to its characteristic impedance, in this case 50 ohms, then, no matter where we place our high-frequency probe, we will always see a sinusoidal voltage of the same amplitude.